All right, today I'm showing you the easiest way to play Caitlyn. She got quite a few buffs the last patches and, oh, minions. Okay, we have to last hit them now. I hope Brand got the experience. And I mean, she's also quite beginner friendly, but the, I don't want to say meta builds, but the best build right now for her is kind of hard to play. But this is an easy build to play with which you will find success. I'll, I'll show it real quick when I can. First of all, we need to push this lane. We're not in the easiest lane. Um, oh god, against a Draven. We better pick our net here, because Brand is not really a champion before he hits level 3, since only then he can uh, can he trigger his passive fully. But with Caitlyn you have long range, you can always poke. Oh, big damage. I didn't expect Brand to go in there. But with a big range you can always look for auto attacks on them. You shouldn't compromise your farm, of course. But, generally speaking, you have an easy time controlling the pace of the lane. So, this makes Caitlyn quite nice for newer AD carry players. That lands. What is he thinking? <laughs> and yeah, we also have Fleet Footwork, a very forgiving early game rune page, allowing you to, um, well, be a little bit more free in your decision making. You don't need to pay attention to your mana too much because you got your presence of mind. Also, your health will be nice and topped off due to your keystone. So you can focus on farming and on poking, which is exactly what Caitlyn likes to do. Let's trap here in the choke point. Didn't work. Didn't work. But it's worth a try. With Caitlyn, it's so easy to push them under tower. And once that happens, you can uh, use the choke points created by the tower and by the walls to then Try to land some traps there. Okay. <laughs> Draven basing in the most impossible position. I mean, but that's how easy Caitlyn's oppressive lane phase with poke damage, especially when next to another poke support, um, can get out of hand because the enemy just has such a tough time dealing with it. Yo, they're, they're making mistakes left and right right now. Anyway, the build is... Um, it's, it's, it's not all in on the energized theme, but you do get... Static shift first for even better wave clear and control. And then you get your mythic infinity edge going for full crit afterwards. You have a choice somewhat. You can either go for armor penetration directly with... Where is he going? Oh, he jumped over the wall. What is he doing? Oh, I miss angles, but he flashed. <laughs> you can either go for your mythic... Uh, no, after your mythic you can either go for Lord Doms or for... Rapid Fire Cannon, I really like the combination of Rapid Fire Cannon and Caitlyn's range. Oh, Shaco is tilted, isn't he? But if you need the armor penetration, you need the armor penetration. That, that kind of depends on your game. As a new player, or as a new AD carry player, it gives you the opportunity to learn AD carry itemization. Small decision making like this. I mean, the decision went to by Last Whisper is probably the biggest one for AD carry. So, practicing that uh, isn't isn't that by any means. But where did Shackle go? What happened? Is he so tilted? Man, people always be tilted in this game. Okay, we got a gank here, but Caitlyn has our net, so it's not a problem. He might go on Brand either way. Okay, he might. I mean, I have heal if we need to. I'm kind of out of mana. But as long as you have mana for your net, you're all fine. Anyway, Brand recalling, which is very good. We can trade like this. We have uh, our Keystone, which already recovered 150 health. And we get more attacks in than the Shaco. So it's all good for us. Yeah, again, with your net, you can always get out, even if they try to engage. And that was kind of a tilt engage that never works. But, I mean... <laughs> We take those. Wave's coming in, so you never want to base first. I definitely want to poke Draven out of lane, or get Draven to base first, so I don't miss farm under tower. And it's fine. Caitlyn is um, okay at farming without spells. With Q it's a little nicer because you can just push at will. But like this is also fine. Do we have enough AD to last it under tower? Well, when the minions hit a little bit, yes. Or when we have a headshot ready, yes, as well. So... I'd say we just push this in, right? So they can't base for free. Using the ping there to show Brand what my plan is. 
Okay, I, I assume they're based. Yeah, we see Shaco in the river, Draven most likely based. We have such a big CS lead, all because, well, because Shaco is tilted, but also because Caitlyn has the oppressive range advantage. And uh, here we go for something like this would be nice, I guess. Tier 1 boots are never bad, and Nunquiver one of the strongest component items you can have. But here you can see the build in full. Static Shiv, Boots, Infinity Edge, Rapid Fire, Lord Doms, Bloodthirst. So sometimes you don't buy Lord Doms, but instead more to Reminder. In this game, for example, it might be necessary because Maokai is such a heavy healer. Um, but when your team has healing reduction, you can still buy Lord Doms, of course, which works nicely with Caitlyn's low base health due to the Giant Slayer passive. Same reason we take Cutdown in our rune page. Anyway, we now bought items, so we are a lot stronger than Draven. And we will take full advantage. Come on, please. Ah, oh, he didn't land. He was too greedy. We took a lot of damage from the minions there, but it doesn't matter. We have um, our Keystone and also our, uh, well, the Legend Bloodline rune doesn't really do much here, but it's still more than nothing. And the on-hit regeneration from Kull also um, exists, at least. So we'll be back to... A healthy amount in no time. And we can use our range again to get that headshot onto Draven. Beautiful damage. Now we got ult. Ult usage on Caitlyn is kind of interesting. Unlike other champions who don't really have it in your combo, you use it either before the fight starts or after the fight as a finisher. You don't really do it mid-fight, as it has a long channel time. Actually, we can ult Draven right now for lane pressure. There's no reason not to. If we get him out of lane, then that means we can push another wave. He loses farm. So this is all good for us. We can use our traps a little bit more. Oh, are we getting ganked? Okay, Maokai. Oh, Shaco gave it away too early. I missed my Q, which kind of sucks. Oh, Draven is a little overextended. We can't chase him, though. We have enemies behind us, and we would be running through a minion wave. Again, we're doing nothing complicated. There are a couple combos Caitlyn can do, or tricks with her. Um, e into Q to deceive the opponent from where the projectile is coming, but this is not necessary. You can just play with your range and dominate your enemies that way. It's super easy. We have a headshot ready, but I think Draven even based. Um, might as well push now. And then base ourselves to keep our item advantage. Chaco is greeting. Okay, he's actually setting up... Yeah, low health Chacos are kind of dangerous because they can bait you into running into their traps. So I need to I need to not get ahead of myself. The Chaco might be up to something. Okay, Draven did base. We will, war, we will trap next to the tower. And next to the tower here. Make it as likely as possible he'll walk into it. Make it as hard for him to navigate as we can. Yeah, we kind of missed the opportunity to go for tempo when Draven went for... Uh, to, oh, what is he doing? Is he just dead? Yes, he overcommitted. He tried to... I don't know. He tried to help Shaco, maybe? But that was... Or maybe he's tilted, too. But that was... Uh, <laughs> that was just disrespecting Caitlyn's early strength. And of course, once the enemy makes a mistake, you have to go and punish. You can't let that slip. Draven's still dead for three seconds. We can actually take another plating, can't we? Our team's not doing too hot. Well, mid lane is ahead, but top lane is very far behind, actually. Which is not what you like to see. Okay. Um, this might be warded, might not be warded, but there's definitely no box in here because I would have triggered it. Anyway, we can base and get our first item and go from there. So... Get this, get this. Actually, sell Cull, get a BF Sword. BF Swords are um, not easy to get because you need 1,300 gold up front. But they are a nice power spike. And we just finished our Cull, so we can definitely sell it. Um, and yeah, with that power spike, I mean, it's more AD than you pay for, right? So 10 AD is worth 350 gold, which means 40 AD is worth 1,400. This only costs 1,300. So natural power spike there, and it's working towards our next item, but we will finish boots probably next base. Waves coming in. And we have the wave clear with static shiv. 
And we still go for poke, of course. There we go. We don't even need mana at this point to control the minion wave because our item does it for us. So we can use our mana to poke the enemy champions. Ah, I missed my CS there. Okay, Jarvan on the dragon. Yeah, use your range. What are they gonna do about it? Even though if they get damage back on you, who cares? You have healing and you have more damage. Especially once you started taking advantage of your early lead and converting that into an item advantage. Oh, that's nasty. Okay, Shaco blocked it. It's unlucky. Or, what do I mean unlucky? It's, it's a skill thing. Okay. Okay, Draven is certainly tilted. There's no way that wasn't intentional. <laughs> Man. They do not like to play this game anymore, huh? Anyway, we can chip away at the tower, win the lane, and then try to carry that lead to victory. But one step at a time. Draven has respawned. We definitely want this plating. Actually, we can just take the tower now, can't we? Maokai could be here. This is risky. Mid lane is missing too. We have vision in the river though, and the enemy bot lane is not a factor here. So this is why I can take that risk. Okay, we took first tower. Which means we are filthy rich right now, right? And I want to spend as much gold as possible. So if we buy boots, we don't have enough for cloak, even if we sell potions. So I better buy this and just a dagger. So still no boots upgrade, but spending money efficiently, or spending your gold efficiently in this game, is important. So Draven is probably freezing this, so I don't um, really have an incentive to go bot lane. The wave's already passed river, you don't want to be in a lane that's already there. Um, so I go mid lane instead now, and try to wreak havoc over there. Anyway, we might actually need to help here. That's a clone, right? No, it's the real. Okay, that's annoying. I have to deal with that clone running at me, but it's fine. I have heal in case Jarvan runs into another box. Trap underneath the crowd control spell. Oh, he really wants me. He flashes, so I heal here. What's he gonna do now? Okay, um... That was close. I couldn't really deal with Shaco running at me. Ah, and that choke point. I also joined the fight rather late. Don't have tier 2 boots to navigate better. So kind of unlucky, all things considered. But still, I mean, we traded our heal for Shen's flash, and the fight wasn't disastrous or anything. It was still fine. So... Let's keep doing us. <laughs> Tristana also with a static shiv. Um, we could base here for boots upgrade and for our health back. Or we could simply pressure the tower together with Nico. Yeah, I better not risk this. Trap into the corner. Makes it more awkward for them to path. But I think I base here. It's unsafe to stay. We got the wave and the tower, we got time to base. And we're about to finish boots, so we won't be long. Get this, get this. Sitting on 500 is a little unfortunate, but it's, I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. Sometimes it's just like that. Okay, so Nico is good. I'm good. Top lane suffers. Um, jungle is okay. Yeah, we're definitely ahead right now, especially due to our bot lane performance. Wait. They're pressuring the tower. Okay, I should have paid attention to that. I should have rotated bot lane here earlier. I might not even miss minions, to be honest. I might miss, miss a couple of these melee minions, probably, but I should have reacted to that earlier. There's no reason to leave farm on the table. Oh, that's nasty. Okay, well played, Brand. I mean, they are so tilted, they're just pushing with um, zero plan, it seems. But yeah, sometimes the frustration just gets the better of you. It happens. Oh, Shaco is still there? 
Where'd he go? Did he really just fool us? No. <laughs> Process of elimination tells me he's in this bush. Okay. Because normally you also see, due to brand passive dealing damage, you see that his silhouette flicker. And then you can just chase after that. But we didn't see that, so we didn't have... Um, oh, well, the bush obscured that, so... I could have realized earlier, but it is what it is. Anyway, now we have the wave way past river, so we don't want to stick around, because that's just an invitation for the enemy to gank you and kill you. So we recall, finish our infinity edge, and go for a dagger, because we do have the gold, and it's already working towards rapid fire cannon. Caitlyn already oppressive auto attack range, but once you get rapid fire cannon on top of that, especially with the bonus damage from static shift, you can just gun people down. It's unreal. Her sieging potential? Crazy. Okay, no stun means we can't follow up, and Shen is uh, somewhat strong, actually. We will need our last Whisper item rather soon, but I, st I still think we can finish Rapid Fire Cannon before that. It's not like he's an immediate threat, and with Rapid Fire Cannon we're better against everyone else. And again, my credo, take the free stuff, win the game. We have the waves pa or mid lane past river, dragons on the map, they can't challenge this, so we just take it. Okay. Let's see. I mean, if we're all pushing bot lane, sure, Caitlyn is a good champion for sieges. I'm all for it. That's never gonna work. Oh, it did work. Why didn't Chaco jump out? I guess he was stunned from Nico or something. So here, we... Of course, we're four people here. We can just, just siege the tower. <laughs> he got stunned. He even has cleanse, but he didn't realize in time. Or maybe he's just tilted. Either or. Both are good for us. But they do have counterplay in the top lane. We need to deal with that fast. Anyway, let's first take this inhibitor while we're at it, because now it's too late to stop this push, truly. Might as well create pressure top bot lane and then push top lane afterwards. They might get our inhibitor here as well, which kind of sucks. But it's not the end of the world, really. Oh, Shackle, are you are so dead. You wasted your only defensive spell. Okay, we know where he jumped. I could have maybe flashed after him for an extra auto attack and then that would have killed. But my flash is worth quite a bit. Anyway, let him run. There's no point... Oh, actually, he's still there. Yeah, I mean, there's still no point chasing him. It's, it doesn't work. <laughs> Unless... Okay, that was fail. I barely... Okay, now I'm, now I'm inting, right? I'm... Oh, this is exactly what I mean. These Shackos trying to play with your greed. And he did exactly that. He got everything from me. That was so poorly played by me. I should have never fallen for this. But alas, I did. Oh well, it happens, it happens. Shouldn't beat myself up over it. But Shen is getting even stronger now. Which might be a problem. Anyway, the good news is we got their inhibitor and they did not get ours. So we can now all push top lane, which mitigates the tower disadvantage here. While they need to deal with supers and we just run in that... Um, run in that lane. Pushing mid lane would be fine too, but we still got all towers there, so there is no immediate pressure on this lane. But yeah, these are the macro strategies you can go for here. And again, as you see, I'm not doing anything complicated with Caitlyn. On the contrary, if I were to play it more simple and not overchase a Shaco, for example, I would be even better right now. But again, yeah, this build, super easy to play. And Caitlyn, a champion that is actively getting buffed patch after patch. so. In my opinion, picking her up right now is a good call. <clears throat> Shackle topside. Yeah, we just stick to our fed mid laner. Five kills as well. Should allow us to... We can't really auto him through his... thing. We're just standing still. Oh god. Oh god, I did not... I did not account for that Tristana's burst damage. She is quite strong too. And I, I just I got baited by Shen. Okay. Um It happens, it happens. I try to make a play there, I got I actually got confused by him his standing still. 
and uh, just attacked him for nothing and overextended. Yeah, this is what you don't want to do as an AD carry. You don't want to frontline. You want to sit in the back and use your range. I walked up all the way and I died for it. So, well, I mean, I died, but at least it might be a lesson for you not to do that. <laughs> But yeah, we're still in a comfortable position due to map pressure. Again, kills <clears throat> don't matter as much for winning a game, but towers do. And look at their towers. Gone, gone, almost gone. We're definitely doing well. And we're close-ish to our rapid fire, which makes us even safer. So stuff like that shouldn't happen in the future, right? Get this, get this, perfect. Lots of action top lane. Can we help? <sighs> Don't have vision. And I mean, even if they body block for him anyway. Alright, got his ults. Wait. <laughs> what was that? And why did I have complete vision on him? That looked weird. Yes, my auto-attack went off, but my auto-attack doesn't provide sight. Oh well, um, I take it. <laughs> and again, now we play with our range. And use that to pressure the tower. We could even... Okay, she deals a lot of damage. I should stop underestimate, uh, underestimating her. Actually, let's still take this camp. There we go. And, I mean, I could stay. My team's fighting, actively fighting, actually. So, actually, I will stay. Rand got the red buff, which <laughs> kind of sucks, but it's fine. It happens. It's hard to navigate when you have to account for his burn damage and for the potential of you of yourself critting or not. But I mean, still, we're controlling every objective, so the game is still firmly in our grasp. Do I go for healing reduction? It's not strictly necessary. I mean, right now, both of these components could build into either or. So, I'm not decided yet. But we'll see. Maokai typically... I mean, the Giant Slayer passive is good against him, too, so... Lord Dom's... Lord Dom's is fine-ish, but if you want to be on the safe side, I would recommend still going for healing reduction here. Anyway, because I'm so far ahead, I think my damage will be enough to cut through him, and in the late game, either way. Yeah, Shen doesn't take too much from us, because we don't have armor penetration yet, but that will change soon, and with our extended range from Rapid Fire Cannon, we can... I mean, without that range, we couldn't really poke him safely either way, so we wouldn't even get that much, that much value from our armor pen. So I'm certainly happy with the rapid fire purchase. Okay, keep sieging. We have Brand by our side, we have the superior range. We can deal with anything they throw at us, really. Okay, Shaco showed himself in our jungle, what is he doing? I'll ult just to send a message. <laughs> Again, Caitlyn's ult not really too important. You do most of the things you do with your auto attacks. So, wave is coming in. Push past River Roam still applies. And I got an assist for that. Nice. There we go. Wave is cleanly past River. Two enemies down. Your other bot lane is completely out of the game. And all of this snowballed from Caitlyn's oppressive early game. They couldn't find a footing. We don't want to overcommit, we're completely alone. And whenever that's the case... This is why. <laughs> this is why I didn't dare hit that tower. Because they can all be coming for you, and you're the AD carry, so chances are they are coming for you. Too much. I try to help Javan, but uh, couldn't get, uh, couldn't tr kill Tristana in time. And if she stays alive for long enough, she just kills you. 
But we still did uh, dealt a lot of damage, and Brand is fed from our lane phase too, so maybe. Maybe, maybe. Okay, works, and Brand even lives. Alright, I take it. And, um... I mean, in an ideal world, Brand would buy healing reduction, as it combos very nicely with Leandri and his passive, effectively applying it for 10 full seconds as soon as he touches someone. I'll, I'll trust, I'll trust. I'll just go Lord Doms. He should really do that. So the inhibitor respawned, but they lost all their towers, which means the entire map belongs to us. The big thing is mid lane tower difference. This tower still standing means they have no control over the jungle whatsoever. Actually leading to numerous problems for them. Let's see if that kills. Doesn't. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just curious. And losing my old cooldown for 60 seconds, what gives? Might as well. Okay. Push past River Rome. Dragon spawning in 30. Clone gone. Yeah, they're trying to make something happen here, hmm? Just trapped between every auto attack for a maximum teamfight impact. I could have healed there. Just probably or potentially save their life. I still have heal ready though. There we go. The extended range from rapid fire cannon in combination with the mini dash from net enabling that kill. Yeah, they had to try and contest that dragon. It was their well, best out, I guess, because they would have denied or at least delayed the Drake Soul for another five minutes. So completely understandable they try to trap us there, but this is where you stay back, this is where you play with range. So they can't find the opening on you. Which they will try to do because you're the damage dealer. If they can take you out of the fight, chances are they can also win that fight. But again, positioning safely with Caitlyn, you have range, you have your net, you have traps. It's so easy. It's so easy to avoid. Now we take all the inhibitors because they were all dead, and whenever the enemy is dead, they cannot defend their base. Gone. Alright. Three inhibs down, that's probably enough to finish. In the near future, at least. Branches ulting, just for the fun of it. Oh, I got trapped. Ah, getting hit by Maokai ulti, not good. I should have recalled ages ago. We were overstaying. When you have high gold and you're in the enemy's base and they're already respawning, you're overstaying. No questions asked. You should definitely reset, get your items, and start from there. So, now we're at 390 attack damage with 80% crit, and armor penetration from Lord Doms, Giant Slayer passive, Infinity Edge passive. So I guess um, it doesn't matter now who we attack, they just die. But we'll see. Maybe they're tankier than they, than they look. But at this point the AD carry should be able to overpower the tank. Easily. We'll see though. Javan ult coming in. Ah. Alright, we just need a siege. We have super minions in every lane. Double supers, that is. Okay, that's quite a bit of damage. Yeah, good engage. Trap between every auto attack. Makes it more likely they step on it. And with Caitlyn's range, you can follow up so easily. She really tried. Okay, now they're all dead. Now we can finish, finally. Whew. But if you want to have more educational AD carry content, you can just click the link on your screen right there.